Okay, my woodworking dates back to the ancient times of the, the 1970s. I made this from Tayfrid's, one of his three books. He has the workbench, he has this drafting table with its uh, drawers and uh, things for all your stuff. And I believe that the, his, the shop there made some of these for the dorms at, at Rhode Island School of Design. Um, but I also, I, put, I want to have a light table. So I put the light table into it. That's different when I did different. But I love it. It works really well. Even these sliding drawers, which you would think would be a problem, really are working out pretty good. They still work very well. Um, obviously, I'm going to be working in uh, SketchUp for a lot of my models. I mean, each job I do, I pretty much make the model from scratch. And um, then I'm going to export this into another 3D program to Cinema 4D. So when it comes in, it looks like this. I don't play too much with the model in this. I'm mostly now going to set up to, take, to get the camera in the right position and to do the exploded view. Here's the exploded view. So I can, you know, take pieces, move them around. I'm looking at these negative spaces. I want to make sure there's room around things, but not too much room. I want to be able to see the inside and outside. So I see the inside of this side, the outside of that one. It's a whole tradition to doing these, that if you go back and find Woodworking Magazine um, over the decades, you'll see other artists you know, using these techniques. I've looked at every single issue and studied the artwork in it. And various people have done it. Of course, there's um, Bob LaPointe, who was the pinnacle of where fine woodworking went. I only work in that shadow now, so, which is fine. I don't know how he did it. I think he probably had a very large drafting setup with vanishing points and a good eye. He was obviously an artist. Um, so he, he was able to pull it off and make really beautiful drawings. I remember one was a, a grandfather clock that he did exploded views of, which really impressed me because that was really, it would be very hard to do using drafting techniques, which is what he was doing. So here we are in Photoshop and also I drew a little screw in here because I forgot to put the screw in the model. There's a screw that I just sketched in. This is where I was going to demonstrate um, painting in. And I can draw with my custom brushes over here. And I also originally, a long time ago, made a set of custom swatches. And these are based on Prismacolor marking pens, you know, and colored pencils too. So first of all, I have, a, you know, this streaky marker effect. Very similar to what you would do if you were working with um, Prismacolor markers on, pa on marking paper. Let's say this is a flats on board. Drawing the chevrons. And Cherry, this is pretty subtle. Shouldn't do it too dark. Um, then there'd probably be a, you know, an island here. I probably did the same thing on the other side. Well, that's good. Maybe another island here. And of course the grain gets a little tighter together here. You, you don't want the grain to read like more vivid than it, than it would be in in your brain because you you tend to when you look at wood you tend to see a little here a little there you don't see it all over it's not clear all over with christian bexford's uh, all cherry philosophy working on some of his stuff i, I did a built-in thing it was all cherry it took freaking forever to do I'm just going to reinforce some of the ends of these.
anyway, so that's cherry. Also, there's gray tones in cherry and all kinds of fun things to do. Um, I've done better. <laughs> uh, my first um, assignment for fine woodworking was 2004. And luckily I'm still kicking with that. That's a, that was a um, pipe box. And luckily I've been able to do some um, furniture projects now, now that I'm mostly retired. But I've learned a lot from, you know, the articles that I've worked on. I mean, I get a chance to see the interior workings of a lot of furniture. And hopefully that settles into my subconscious so I can work on design work, which I'm very interested in designing furniture. No one sees the base structure of art. The base structure of art is probably the most important part of it. And if you, see, if you copy from master artworks, like paintings and drawings, or um, do analysis, you will discover more things about how they thought about that. But also as you learn to draw from life, you will develop a better sense of what's important in it. Usually it's the big things that we don't even pay attention to that are much more important than the little details. Everybody fixates on little teeny little details, but really it's about the big, the big move. How, how is this piece divided half vertically, a vertical piece? Or how much does the top stick out? Sometimes you can't tell that until you actually have the piece in front of you and you figure out how far it goes. I feel encouraged that there are people that can do these things. I think it's great. No, I'm not in competition. I, I don't need to earn a living doing furniture design or building. I'm doing this purely for fun. And one of the fun things is being able to go into a museum and look at a piece of art or a piece of furniture and have a good understanding of what that was and what they were doing and, and a connection. We have, we have at least a dozen master woodworkers that, we've, that we see in the magazine that I think should be an inspiration for all. We shouldn't be intimidated. That's, that's not the right thing to do with this information. The best thing is to say, yeah, I'm going to get up and try to make something today. That's what I do.